So if you're doing the qual lab, this is how you would do the nitrate test. I'm going to do the nitrate test on three different things, barium nitrate, calcium chloride, and potassium nitrate, and show you how to figure out if you have a nitrate for your unknown. What you're going to end up looking for is you're going to end up looking for a brown ring. So here's a test that I just ran previously. And so you can see there's a brown ring at the interface there between the two layers. Okay, and I'm going to kind of move that up and down. I can't really tilt it too much. If we go from this angle, you can see that brown color there is what that ring is that's in between the two layers. That's very, very distinct on that one. Now, before we start, one of the chemicals we're using here is concentrated sulfuric acid. So that is something that can eat through some skin really nicely, so you need to be very careful with this. And in particular, when this mixes with water, a lot of energy is released. And so if there's a little bit of water in a test tube, it can cause it to splatter or boil. And so you need to be very careful when you work with this. And when you're done, you need to be careful in cleaning up your test tubes. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take these three things, and we're going to take a little bit of each. I'm going to put the barium nitrate into A. We're going to go alphabetically here. Calcium chloride into B. And the potassium nitrate we're going to put into C. So the barium nitrate should give us a positive result, the calcium chloride should give us a negative result, and the potassium nitrate should give us a positive result. The reason why we're doing three is because the barium nitrate and potassium nitrate will have a critical difference between them. Next what you're going to do, after you've put some of your unknown into the test tube, and you'll see that I haven't put very much, just a little bit, is you're going to put some iron sulfate, iron 2 sulfate in there. And so we're just going to take a squirt full of that, drop that in there. And you'll note that when I put that into A, that it changed to a precipitate. So even though there's a nitrate there, there's also a second reaction going on. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take these test tubes and you're going to kind of layer them at a 45 degree angle. You're going to add the sulfuric acid to it. Okay. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take my concentrated sulfuric acid being very careful and get that into there and I'm going to slowly drip that down underneath. So this A was one with a nitrate. And then we're going to let that form the layer there and we're going to look for a brown ring at the interface between this. Now this is going to be hard to tell because of that barium sulfate precipitate. But we're going to look for a brown layer to form there. While we're waiting for that we're going to go to part B. So here I have calcium chloride and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to add sulfuric acid. This one should show a negative result, so we're expecting not to see a brown ring. We're just going to slowly add that at an angle to layer it underneath. Okay, now if you do this, you'll note that the test tube becomes very warm when you mix the sulfuric acid with there. So when that mixes with water, a lot of energy comes off. So I'm not seeing any brown layer on that. We're going to let that sit and make sure that stays like that. And the last one here is our potassium nitrate. This one will expect a brown layer on top of a, or in the, in the middle of two clearish layers. We're going to drizzle that down to the bottom. So already I can see some brown color forming. Let me get the uh, paper behind that. So hopefully you can see that brown kind of intermediate layer in between the two. Uh, and let's get these so you can see them. If I actually go back... It's difficult to see that there is a brown layer on that. Right in between the barium sulfate precipitate and under here where the sulfuric acid is lying. Here there is no brown layer because it's a negative for nitrate. So, we've shown that the chloride is not reading that brown layer. And then here, there's a really, really easy to see brown layer in between the two interfaces, or at the interface of the two layers. So let's take a look on that a little closer. A couple different angles.
And then here's the original one that I had before that I had run, the very clear brown interface there. So that's how you do the nitrate test. And then of course, once you're done, it's really important that we remember to be very cautious with the fact that this test tube now has concentrated sulfuric acid down here. So when we pour it out, we can expect um, some more energy to be released. We wanna be careful when we mix this with water. Kind of want to pour this down the drain with running water, but being wary of very for any splatter when you do it. So here I took barium nitrate, here I took barium chloride, and I re-ran them to try and give you a glimpse of how subtle that is for when you have that precipitate there for that brown ring. So it's really important that you run things next to a known, next to an unknown. Uh, to make sure that they match. So this one is just a subtle brown ring on there and the other one is missing and so you can tell the difference when I hold the two together but it's much more difficult to see when I'm not holding the two next to each other especially compared to some of the other ones so so very difficult to see from up there a little bit easier to see down there the brown color on the right uh, especially if we if we look at another one that has the brown ring you know, that's very clear that there's a brown ring there, and it's not so clear on this other one. Uh, so that's why it's important to kind of run those next to one another to really get a good comparison, especially when you have that precipitate.